Roy Frederick Naylor moved in dangerous circles. He was a key player in the selling of heroin in Adelaide in the early 1980s. He could often be found doing deals in the back lounge of the Princess Berkeley Hotel in Hindley Street after hours in 1983. Roy was short of stature, standing only 173 centimetres tall, but was a violent man when he needed to be. He had a muscular build, many tattoos, black hair and a full beard. Roy loved American muscle cars, especially Trans Am Mustangs. In 1983, Naylor was caught selling the drug in an undercover sting dubbed Operation Wire and was due to appear in court later in the year. It was an appointment he never kept. His wife, Sonia Marie, was a stripper of average build, 172 centimetres in height, with brown hair. She had a small tattoo on her right ankle. They both enjoyed the thrill and freedom the underworld lifestyle provided through dealing drugs. In 1984, they were living in a rented apartment at the Atlantic Tower Motor Inn, a 12-storey motel which formerly had a revolving restaurant at the top on Anzac Highway at Glenelg. The couple vanished from their apartment either in late June or early July of 1984. Roy was then aged 29 and Sonia was just 21. There was a report they had been seen leaving the tower escorted by several men. Sonia's parents and sister received letters in her handwriting saying the pair had decided to begin again somewhere away from Adelaide. Police suspected the couple may not have had a say in their disappearance but still could not rule out the possibility that they had escaped overseas, leaving their past behind. A convicted criminal named Lloyd Murray Reed claimed he had driven the Naylors to Adelaide Airport, a short distance from Glenelg, in July 1984, accompanied by another career criminal named Bruce Douglas Sandery. There were unconfirmed reports the couple were seen at the airport, and police received reports for years after that the Naylors had been seen in various places. None of the sightings led anywhere. At the same time, there were reports that the Naylors were taken to Mangroves at a remote beach at Port Gawla and shot in a gangland execution, where their bodies hidden in the lonely sands or dumped into the ocean. If they were murdered, it was presumed due to a substantial drug debt. Alternatively, someone may have wanted to ensure that Naylor never made it to the courtroom, where he may have said the wrong thing. In 1990, an inquest into the disappearance determined that the couple had been murdered, but by whom, when and where could not be said. Currently, a $200,000 reward is on offer to help solve the case. Sandery had also been ensnared in Operation Wire and had helped his case when Naylor vanished. Bruce Sandry, the man who imported the heroin into South Australia for Naylor to pass on to his network of dealers to distribute, had a long record. From the time he turned 18 in 1969, he was hardly out of jail. And in 1971 and 1975, he was convicted of assaulting police. On the 3rd of April 1977, at 9.30pm, he and another man called Pansioni were pulled over by a police patrol on OG Road, Clemsig, a suburb of Adelaide. The Ford Falcon he was driving had bald tyres. The constables who stopped the pair searched the car and found two walkie-talkies, which Sandri said he used in his work in construction. Then he and Pansioni took off running. One of the constables tackled Sandri, but in the scuffle received a head wound and Sandri stole his service revolver. The gun was eventually returned to police through Sandri's solicitor. A full search of the abandoned car revealed why the men had legged it. Inside were gloves, hand tools, oxyacetylene gear and explosives. Pansioni later went to police of his own volition and admitted he was going to be lookout while Sandri robbed the Birdwood Museum safe that night. Pansioni himself had a record for hotel breaking and larceny offences in Adelaide. In December 1976, he had done jobs on the Prince Albert and Exeter hotels and on the 16th of February 1977 had been caught red-handed at the Seven Stars Hotel. Sandry, meanwhile, robbed the North Adelaide Post Office later in April and went to Queensland, where he carried out similar crimes before being caught and on the 4th of August 1977 
being sentenced to nine months' imprisonment. When his sentence was completed, he was extradited to South Australia and lodged in Adelaide Jail on the 25th of October 1978. On Christmas Day 1978, Sandry took the opportunity during a picture show to slip over the eastern wall of Adelaide Jail with two other prisoners. Raymond John Saunders and Maurice Frederick Burr were both 30 and, like Sandry, heavily tattooed. The trio escaped across the railway tracks outside the jail walls and were last seen that day near the River Torrens Weir. While Saunders and Burr were being held on breaking offences and not considered dangerous, Sandry was known to be violent. Sandry was apprehended in early February 1978 and went to court in April where he was convicted of wounding the constable at Clemsig. He received two and a half years jail time and then answered for his jail escape in July and August. He had pled guilty and while at the criminal court in Sturt Street, escaped again on the 13th of August. He was recaptured on the 28th of November 1979 and went back to jail. On the 12th of April 1988, Sandry himself went missing. He was last seen drinking at the Earl of Zetland Hotel in Sydney. That night, residents reported hearing gunshots and saw a man's body being lifted into a white van by three others. The mystery of his disappearance was resolved in October 1988, when a body uncovered in sand dunes at Foreshore Road Botany were identified as his remains. Sandery had been shot five times. Sydney gangster Nettie Smith was charged with the murder of Sandery, but the charges were eventually dropped in 1996. Another man, brothel keeper Harvey Jones, another murdered associate of Smith's, disappeared in July 1983. His body was also dragged from the sand at Botany in 1995, just 200 metres from where Sandery had been buried. The other man said to have driven the Nailors away from Glenelg in 1984, Lloyd Reed, was also suspected of being their killer. Born in 1952, his rap sheet, which went back to his youth in 1967, included assault, heroin dealing, bank robbery and escaping from prison. He, however, later told police in an interview in a prison cell that the man who shot the pair was a Sydney drug dealer named Jack Edward Wilson. Police received information from other sources also fingering Wilson as the murderer of the Naylors. Wilson, 51, was himself shot dead at Tarkutta, New South Wales on the 18th of July 1986. The man who killed him was Lloyd Reed. Reed shot Wilson four times with a .22 calibre pistol Police found $300,000 in cash and more than a million dollars worth of heroin near the scene. Although charged with murder, Reed, who claimed self-defence after Wilson had fired a gun at him, was convicted only of manslaughter and served seven years in jail of a ten and a half year sentence. Back in South Australia, Reed was arrested in August 1992 for selling 277 grams of pure heroin to an undercover police officer. $136,000 was left in an Adelaide motel room. Once that was collected, the drug was placed near a restaurant at Henley Beach for retrieval. He was sentenced to seven years and eight months imprisonment. The 40-year-old had already spent half of his life behind bars. Whether the Naylors were consigned to a similar lonely grave as Sandery, which has never been found, or whether they escaped the perilous world they inhabited and successfully fled to start new lives elsewhere, is still unknown. It probably always will be.